Hey, what's up everybody, Trofinet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about interesting Gwent decks to play around with or discuss new features in the game. And that is exactly what we'll be doing today. After months of waiting, we finally got more information on Gwent's new expansion. Gontaro Dim is back and we'll get to see how far his influence has reached over the history of the Witcher in the Master Mirror expansion. Every day my fellow partners will be revealing new and exciting cards, so definitely keep an eye out on Twitter, Facebook and more for all those juicy reveals. In today's video we will be looking at and discussing the new statuses and keywords that will be introduced in this expansion, as well as the first evolving card in the game, Nilfgaard's Usurper. Let's start with a new status I'm really really happy with, Veil. Veil prevents a unit from gaining any statuses, both negative and positive. So locks, poison, shield, vitality, bleeding and more will not stick to units with Veil. It does not block targeting however, so you'll have to keep an eye out for this status to avoid trying to apply a status on something that will remain unaffected. I'm really happy this made it into the game since I was already a strong advocate for a way to provide status immunity ever since my video on the problems with Nilfgaard. With Veil we finally have a way to fully protect our units from poison and lock decks. They can still be destroyed with cards like Vincent van Morlehem since Veil vale still counts as a status itself but that at least limits the options your opponent has. Since Veil vale is also a status, it can be purified away, so that's also a way to make that unit vulnerable again, but it requires an extra step. All in all, a very, very nice addition. Next we have Echo, which automatically puts the card it affects back on top of your deck at the start of the next round after you've played it, so it moves it from the graveyard back on top of your deck at the very top of it. It seems to be a modifier for special cards for now and it will only trigger once since the card gains doomed as well when Echo triggers. The only Echo card we've seen so far is Oniromancy, which works like Royal Decree but because of Echo you can play it twice in one game. It has a higher provision cost, but even then, playing any unit from your deck twice in one game is very, very powerful, and this might very well replace Royal Decree in a lot of decks. Super, super powerful. Devotion is another new modifier which only triggers the attached ability if your deck does not include neutral cards. This is a similar limitation as with Shu and uh, Radea. But this restriction is in mind even more restrictive. This means that you can't have certain useful tutor cards like uh, Mata, Radea, Royal Decree or Oneromancy in your deck. But to offset this, Devotion abilities seem to be slightly more powerful than normal abilities. We'll have to see what the other cards yet to be revealed do with this modifier. Next up is some love for Skellige. Veteran is finally back and I couldn't be more happy. Um, veteran increases the base power of a unit by one at the end of every round, wherever it is, so in hand, deck or graveyard. For people who haven't played the game before Homecoming, this is called strengthening. Since you increase the base power, this doesn't count as a boost, so it's important if you reset that unit that was for example strengthened from 6 power to 8 power, it will stay at 8 power even after the reset. This further emphasizes Skellige's power in round 3, so in longer games, which was always a staple of the faction even when it was introduced in the Blood and Wine expansion in The Witcher 3. Skellige also gets a new status effect, Rupture. If you apply Rupture to an enemy unit, it will get damaged by its own power at the end of their next turn. So if the target is unarmored and unshielded, this will destroy the unit outright, otherwise it will hit the armor or the shield. It's a very interesting status since it has the potential to destroy a unit completely, but allows your opponent to counter it by for example applying a shield, which would nullify the damage rupture does, or you can purify the status away since again this is a new status effect. It's another very cool addition um, and a very cool conditional destruction method for Skellige. On to Squiatel. Uh, they also got a new ability, Symbiosis, and it's a pretty weird one. Um, the modifier is present on certain units, so similar to Harmony, but only seems to trigger once regardless of how many Symbiosis units you have on the field. 
The official description states, whenever you play a nature card, spawn a wandering triant with a power equal to the number of symbiosis cards you control on a random row. That's a lot to uh, unpack. So simply put, if you have three symbiosis units on the field and you play a nature card, a three-powered wandering triant will be spawned. Symbiosis seems to be present on another new token card, the Young Dryad, which basically kind of makes Symbiosis the catalyst for a Swarm deck inside of a Swarm deck. Um, so you would first build your Dryad Swarm, which can then trigger the appearance of a bunch of tree ants, and therefore a double Swarm. I'm interested to see how this will play out in practice, but it seems a bit weird that the ability does not trigger for each Symbiosis unit you have. It's Kind of logical that it doesn't, the amount of units could quickly spiral out of control, but it goes against how all the abilities work, since it only triggers once, unless I'm understanding it incorrectly. I guess we'll have to see how that works out in practice. And finally we have Nilfgaard, which gets a new tag, the Conspiracy tag, and Conspiracy abilities trigger when their original target was a spying unit. This will synergize very well with the Spying Archetype, which seems to be getting a huge boost from this expansion, something I was also asking for in my video on Nilfgaard, so I'm uh, really happy with that change as well. Which brings us right to the Evolution cards, because uh, Nilfgaard's Evolution card will also boost the Spying Archetype immensely. Um, evolution cards, however, get rather complicated, so bear with me. So each of these cards uh, has three forms, but they count as a single card. So once you unlock the card, you have all three forms. Um, and those three forms, they move through those forms from round to round, kind of similar to how Veteran works. Although I think this only happens either in your hand or in your deck, so not in the graveyard. Each consecutive form expands on the abilities of the previous form. So ideally you would wait until the final round to play your evolution card, which should be fully evolved. Um, the first card that was revealed like this was the Usurper, evolving from a simple officer to a Usurper General and then finally to a full-fledged Emperor as we know him. The first evolution seems to happen naturally with no requirements at the start of the second round, and the second evolution requires devotion, so he will only move to his final form in round 3 in case you don't include any neutral cards in your deck. So again, kind of a limitation. I'm guessing most of these evolution cards will require devotion in some way, most of them probably, uh, to limit some of the wilder combos that are possible with these new very powerful cards. The abilities we see on the Usurper are a very, very cool glimpse into what the other cards will be able to do. Um, the Usurper specifically always plays Spying Operatives on the other side of the field, up to two in his second form and also in his final form, which already synergizes quite nicely with a Spying deck, so triggering anything that reacts to a Spying card being played or Spying statuses being applied. In his final form he also gets Veil and is boosted every time you play a card with the Agent tag. It's actually really cool to see the leader cards coming back in this way, because uh, we kind of lost them with the decoupling from leader skins and leader abilities, but now we'll start getting them back. Um, because of this, let's end this video with a little bit of speculation on the other evolution cards. Syndicate is up next, and I'm pretty sure this will be Dijkstra. Um, his story arc is perfect for an evolution card like this, and matches the Usurper's story quite closely, actually. Um, he could probably move from a simple spy to a mob boss in um, Novigrad and then finally the emperor that he can become in one of the endings to the Witcher 3. Skellig on the other hand is a bit more difficult. Um, Krach on Crate or Svalblood could be a possible evolution card, but I'm hoping, and it's kind of my personal guess, uh, their evolution card would be Ceres, uh, Ceres on Crate and her rise to Queen of Skellige. That would be really, really cool, but it's probably more logical to go with one of the other cards, but uh, one can only dream. Um, next up is Monsters, uh, which could very well be uh, Detloff, I think, raising him from his human form to his uh, vampire form, like we have also the, the vampire form card for Regis. Um, and finally to his full-on higher vampire monstrosity form. 
Um, there are definitely other options here, but that love seems like the more interesting one, except of course if they go for Gaunter Udim himself, but since he's already a neutral card and he's pretty static as a character himself, uh, I don't see him moving to monsters now either. That's my guess for monsters, so that laugh. Then we have Northern Realms also. Yeah, oh, Northern Realms also has some very, very intriguing options. Um, my guess would be uh, Calante and her rise to Queen of Sintra. Uh, that would be really cool. You might have some interaction with the, uh, the abundance of Sintrian cards already in Northern Realms. Um, especially because we've seen a few cards from her storyline in the reveal trailer so far. So she would definitely be my guess. But again, they could also go for somebody like uh, Ada or uh, Vandergrift. Both characters that have a very literal transformation in their character arc. So they would also be a very nice fit as a Northern Realms evolution card. Finally, we have Squiatel and that's kind of a difficult one for me. Um, the most straightforward one, I think, would be Yorvet, but some of the Dryads also have an interesting story arc with some uh, physical transformation as well. Um, or maybe they go for the easy option and make it another Zoltan card, but I seriously doubt that because there's plenty of Zoltan cards already. Now that I think about it, um, Saskia could also be a very nice fit, changing her from her human form to dragon into maybe something else. I not really sure what the third form would be then, but uh, I guess we'll see pretty, pretty soon. So, um, well, maybe maybe they could make a Squiatel, the Squiatel evolution card, just uh, an evolving squirrel. That would be that would be very nice, even though we have a gorgeous squirrel card already. I uh, kind of found my favorite card in the expansion already. Um, but that's, that's it for today. Um, what do you think about the new expansion, the Master Mirror expansion? What are your guesses for the upcoming evolution cards? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm really curious about your guesses as well. And uh, if you're aching for more of this, I have recent videos on a hard-hitting Skellige deck you can use in Ranked or a Northern Realms Mages deck, which is kind of fitting in the season of Magic. Um, or if you're looking for something a little bit different, I also have uh, art secret videos in Gwent itself. So about the uh, secret easter eggs you might have missed in the art art for Gwent. Um, or any of my broader analysis videos, there's plenty of those on the channel as well. Any feedback on any of these videos is really, really, really appreciated. And you can check me out on Twitter at, at @trophynuts. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not leave a like? Any support, again, is greatly appreciated. Thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!